Okay, so picture this. You're in the IELTS exam hall, the clock is ticking, and you're staring at that writing task two prompt, trying to sound all intelligent and academic, but then this question pops into your head, can I use I then this thing? It's the grammar question that keeps on giving. Right. Like, um, does I make my writing sound too casual for the IELTS? <laughs> well, today we're diving deep into that very question with personal pronouns IELTS with Fiona. It's a fantastic resource for anyone looking to master the art of pronoun power in their IELTS essays. Definitely a must read. So let's address the elephant in the room. Can we use I in our IELTS essays? Or is it a one-way ticket to a lower score? Well, according to this source, it's actually a big yes. You can use I but, and this is a big but. There's a strategy to it. There's always a strategy. Always. It's not like you can just sprinkle I all over your essay and call it a day. So why are we so hesitant to use I in formal writing anyway? It feels natural to talk that way, right? Well, think about it. Academic writing is all about objectivity. It's about presenting evidence, logic, and a broader perspective. When you use too many eyes, it can sometimes feel a bit like you're only relying on your own limited experience. Makes sense. It's like we're saying, hey, examiner, this is just my opinion based on my little bubble of the world. Not exactly the impression we want to make. Exactly. We want to show the examiners we can handle the big picture, that we understand the wider context. And the source gives this great example. It compares two sentences about cycling safety. One says, where I live, roads are busy. A cyclist was injured near my home last week. The other, cycling is dangerous on busy roads in cities such as London, where an alarming number of cyclists are injured every year. See how different those sound? Oh, absolutely. The second one sounds way more academic, like less random story, more like a statement backed up by facts and a broader understanding of the issue. Exactly. And that's key for the idols. We want to demonstrate that we're not just pulling from our own little corner of the world. OK, that makes total sense. But here's the thing. IELTS Task 2 specifically asks for your opinion. So how do we balance that with sounding objective? It feels a bit contradictory. That's where things get interesting. The source is very clear that phrases like, I think, I believe, in my opinion, those aren't just okay to use, they're actually essential for making your stance clear. So it's all about finding that sweet spot, personal enough to convey your viewpoint, but objective enough to present a well-supported argument. You got it. And when it comes to using personal anecdotes, which the IELTS instructions sometimes encourage, the source has some really practical advice. Oh, like what? They talk about taking those personal stories and elevating them into broader examples. So instead of just talking about your own experience, you're using it to illustrate a wider point. I like that. So it's not just a me story. It becomes a we story. Exactly. They use this example about technology and older people. Mm -hmm. One example is super specific. It is becoming more and more difficult to purchase essential items without a mobile phone. The other day, for example, I was at a car park, and the only way to pay was via an app on my phone. But then they offer this other version. It is becoming more and more difficult to purchase essential items without a mobile phone. Many car parks, for example, require users to download an app in order to purchase a ticket. It's subtler, right? Way subtler. And it gets the point across without sounding like a personal complaint, more like an observation about a trend. Exactly. And here's a pro tip from the source. Using plurals can instantly make your writing sound more formal. It's like a shortcut to a more academic tone. Ooh. I'm all about those shortcuts, especially when it comes to IELTS writing. Now let's talk about we. It feels a little less personal than I, but it still has that informal vibe sometimes. What's the verdict on we? We is an interesting one. Used strategically, it can be incredibly powerful. It creates that sense of shared experience, shared responsibility, which can really draw the reader in. I can see that. So in which situations is it okay to use we? Give us the rundown. The source breaks it down like this. First, when you're referring to humanity as a whole, like we must address climate change before it's too late, it creates a sense of urgency, don't you think? Definitely. What else we got? You can use it when you're discussing shared experiences or responsibilities. For example, we all have a role to play in reducing plastic waste. Or when you're presenting a view that's generally accepted, like we often assume that technology has improved our lives, but this is not necessarily true. And lastly, you can use we when talking about a specific country or community. In my country, we have implemented strict laws to combat pollution, for example. OK, so there are some pretty clear boundaries there. It makes sense, but I can also see how it'd be easy to overuse we if you're not careful. Does the source offer any alternatives to avoid that? They do. They suggest using the passive voice. It's a handy tool for situations where you might be tempted to overuse we. 
So instead of saying, in my country, we have implemented strict laws to combat pollution, you could say, in my country, strict laws have been implemented to tackle pollution. It's a small tweak, but it makes a difference. Definitely keeps things moving without that repetitive we. Now, I used to think that using one was like the ultimate sign of formality in essays, you know, like one might say. But now I'm starting to think maybe that's not quite right. What are your thoughts on one? You are spot on. Personal pronouns IELTS with Fiona actually advises against using one altogether. Hold on. One sounds so formal. What's wrong with it? It seems that way, doesn't it? But it often comes across as stiff, overly formal, even a bit pompous. And it can make your writing sound unnatural. Hmm. Okay, I'm starting to see it. What should we use instead of one, then? They give a good example comparing these two sentences. Lessons should be provided to students so that one's interest can be developed early versus lessons should be provided to school students so that their interest can be developed early. Do you hear the difference? Oh, yeah. The second one is way more natural. It doesn't sound like I'm trying so hard to impress anyone with my vocabulary. Exactly. And the source even warns that using one can sometimes lead to grammatically awkward sentences. They give a couple of examples, and let me tell you, they're painful to read. Ouch. Yeah, I'm getting flashbacks to some of my old essays now. One is officially off my list. So we've covered I, we, and banished one to the shadow realm of IELTS writing. What about you? It feels so natural to use, but I'm guessing it's a no-go for something as formal as the IELTS. You're right. It's a tricky one. As tempting as it is to write like we speak, directly addressing the reader as you is generally considered too informal for IELTS writing. Are there any exceptions? Times when you might be acceptable. A couple. The source mentions that it's generally okay to use you when you're making a point that's universally applicable. For example, instead of writing when the effects of climate change are considered. You could say, when you consider the effects of climate change, it just has more impact, don't you think? It does, it feels more engaging, but it's still not directed at the reader personally, right? It's more like a general you that anyone can relate to. Exactly, it's about appealing to a universal truth, not singling out the reader. The other exception is when you're giving examples of hypothetical situations for a broad audience. Can you give us an example of that? Sure. The example they give is, if you reduced your meat consumption, you could make a significant impact on the environment. Okay, so it's about making sure you doesn't sound like you're addressing the reader or, God forbid, the examiner directly. Exactly. We're aiming for that objective academic tone we talked about earlier. But even in those exceptions, it's often best to err on the side of caution. So if we're not using you in those situations, what should we use instead? Well, instead of saying if you reduced your meat consumption, uh, you could say if more people reduce their meat consumption or even reducing meat consumption could have a significant impact. Right. So we're using people to keep that broader perspective or using the passive voice to avoid that direct address. Exactly. It's all about those subtle shifts in language to maintain that formal tone. This is great. We've really gone in depth on all these different pronouns. What would you say is the most important takeaway from personal pronouns IELTS with Fiona for our listeners who are prepping for the IELTS? I think the biggest takeaway is this. Using personal pronouns in IELTS writing isn't about memorizing a rigid set of rules. It's more about being mindful, being strategic, thinking about the context of what you're writing and choosing your pronouns accordingly. So it's more about finding the right balance, not about avoiding them altogether. Exactly. We still want our voices to shine through in our writing, even when it's formal. We're not robots after all. Absolutely. We have unique perspectives and experiences to share, and those come through in our writing, even in subtle ways. Precisely. And when we use personal pronouns strategically, they can actually make our writing more effective. It's about finding that sweet spot between being personal and being objective. I love that. It's not just about avoiding mistakes. It's about using these pronouns as tools to elevate our writing, to make it more impactful. Exactly. And that takes practice and careful consideration. Speaking of practice, we've covered a lot of ground here today. But before we wrap up our deep dive into personal pronouns IELTS with Fiona, any final pearls of wisdom you'd like to share with our listeners? What should they keep in mind as they're working on their IELTS essays? I think the source sums it up beautifully. Aim for balance. Don't be afraid of personal pronouns, but use them thoughtfully, use them sparingly, and use them with purpose. And never forget that your main goal is to present a well-structured, well-supported argument that's easy for the examiner to follow. It all comes back to clarity of communication. That's what's going to get you those high scores. Couldn't agree more.
A well-reasoned, well-written essay will always shine through, regardless of which pronouns you choose. Now, before we wrap things up entirely, I have a final thought-provoking question for you and for our listeners. Oh, I'm intrigued. Lay it on us. We've talked about how strategically using personal pronouns can make your writing clearer, more engaging even. Yeah. How it can help you connect with the reader on a deeper level. Right. Finding that sweet spot. Exactly. But I'm wondering, can we take that even further? Could using personal pronouns in this strategic way actually make your writing more persuasive? Ooh, interesting. How so? Think about it. When you subtly weave in your perspective using I, or you create that sense of shared understanding with we, you're essentially building a connection with the reader, right? You're inviting them to see things from your side, to connect with your thought process. Precisely. And that connection, that shared perspective, can make your arguments more compelling, even subconsciously. That's a really fascinating point. So it's not just about avoiding sounding too casual. It's also about using these pronouns as tools to actually enhance your arguments and connect with the reader on a whole other level. Exactly. It's about harnessing the power of personal pronouns to craft a more persuasive, more engaging, and ultimately more effective piece of writing. This has been a true deep dive. Mm. I feel like I have a whole new understanding of how to make personal pronouns work for me in my IELTS writing. Me too. It's amazing how such small words can have such a big impact. Absolutely. So for all our listeners out there, remember clarity, balance, and a strategic approach to personal pronouns can make all the difference. A well-crafted essay full of clear arguments and your unique voice, that's the key to IELTS success. Until next time, happy writing. So to sum it all up, it's not that we can never use I or we in our IELTS writing. It's more about knowing when and how to use them effectively. Exactly. It's all about finding that balance. Mm -hmm. Bringing in those personal pronouns strategically without sacrificing the clarity and objectivity of our arguments. And I really love that point you made about persuasion. It's not just about being grammatically correct. It's about using these pronouns as tools to make our writing more compelling more relatable. Right. When you can create that sense of shared understanding with the reader, your arguments are just going to resonate more strongly. This has been such an eye-opening deep dive. I feel so much more confident about tackling personal pronouns in my IELTS writing now. Me too. It's amazing how much impact these seemingly small grammatical choices can have on our writing. Absolutely. So to all our listeners out there who are gearing up for the IELTS, remember, a winning essay is all about balance. Combine those clear, well-structured arguments with your own unique voice. That's the magic formula. Couldn't agree more. And remember, have fun with it. This is your chance to showcase your skills and your unique perspective. Exactly. Let your personality shine through. Until next time, everyone, happy writing. Bye for now.